In this lesson, we're going to provide some more structure for our document. As we'll learn, you see this M tag? We're immediately inserting it, but we need to tell the browser a little bit more about our web page. And before we do that, let's take an example and return to NetTouch. And once again, I'm going to right click or control click and go to view source like so. Now notice, what are these tags right here? We have something called a doc type. What is that? What's an HTML and head and meta and title? This looks like it's creating the title of the window and all of these scary tags. What these do is describe how the page should be displayed. So let's get started with that very first one. And this is the wrapping for every page you'll create. And you'll see doc type. HTML. Now, I really don't want this to confuse you. It has a lot of history, but at its core, it tells the browser how to render the page. Now, I know that's confusing, and I don't want you to worry about it too much, especially as you're just getting started and the industry is changing quite a bit. Now, truthfully, you could get away with not displaying this at all because the browser will make a lot of assumptions. But that said, all of us, it's a standard, include the doc type. Now, if you want to learn more of that, always use Google. And you'll see right here, when performing HTML validation testing on a web page, it tells the HTML validator which version the web page coding is supposed to comply with. All right, that's a lot of gibberish. It's really confusing at this stage. What is validation? What is the validator? We'll learn all of that. But just know that this is referred to as an HTML5 doc type. It's the latest doc type, and you need to be using it in your projects. And we'll discuss this more in future lessons. Next, we need to specify what type of content is following. And this is HTML. We're going to be working with HTML. So we're going to create a wrapping HTML element. Notice it follows the exact same format as when we created strong tags. We do the exact same thing to specify that we're closing this tag. Because again, if we did not have this, the browser would never know when the contents of this element have completed. So we have to specify it. Next, we need to tell the browser some information about our page. For example, what is the title of our page? I'm going to go and open up Firefox 4. And if we open the default page, can you see right here? Mozilla Firefox start page. This is what we call the title. So again, I'm going to right click, view the source in Firefox. And if I come down, you'll see right here the title element. And this specifies what the title should be. I'm going to create a head element. And this head element contains information that will not be displayed on the page. Instead, it's used for referencing those style sheets that we talked about. And it also can be used for specifying how each character should be rendered and also the title of your page. So let's try that out now. I'm going to type title, my first website. And then again, I have to specify when are we at the end of the title. So I'll close it now. I'm going to save that. And then in Firefox to load this page, I'm going to open the file and choose index.html. And sure enough, if we go to the top, you'll see my first website. But note that nothing is displayed on the page. So where do we specify where the actual body of our website should be? Well, it should be displayed within a body element. So note that I'm going to use you see these tags here, HTML, head, title. These are called HTML tags, and we also refer to them as elements, HTML elements. So if you see, hear me use both of those, they're interchangeable. So we're going to wrap the body of our website within an element called body. Now what you see here is what we call a beginning markup. It's the markup that you'll use for all new websites. And in fact, some code editors, when you create a new file, will automatically place a version of this code within the document. Now there's one more thing I want to go over, and that's the meta char set. I'm going to type meta char set equals UTF-8. All right, so I absolutely do not want this to scare you. For now, note that this specifies how each character should render. And you can Google it for a little bit more information, but I really don't want you to concern yourself with this too much because it won't affect you. So if we zoom in, this is a little bit different. This time we didn't create meta and then a closing tag. We added the second part. And then what are all these quotes? The second part is what we call an attribute. It's an attribute of the element or an attribute of the tag. And it provides more information. So we have an attribute, and then we specify the value by typing equals, and then within quotes, which is honestly 
optional at this point, the value. So here we're creating a meta element and we're specifying its char set or car set attribute to be equal to UTF-8. And you might be familiar with that. So with HTML5, if you've heard that buzzword, it did bring some changes and it makes things a little bit more loose. So if you wanted, you could simply type UTF-8 without the quotes. Now with that said, some people think it's cleaner to wrap them in quotes and also code editors will optimize and search for the quotes and style it differently. So keep that in mind. Now what about specifying the end of this meta type like we did with head, title, body, and HTML? Well do we need to type meta like this? And the answer is no. And how come? And the reason is because in this case we are not applying a value. We are simply specifying an element, giving it an attribute, and we don't need any text in the middle. When that's the case, there's something known as self-closing elements. This could be one. Now, traditionally what you'll see here, when we don't have a closing element, you can self-close it by doing this, what you see right here. So notice this is the exact same thing as this. Create the element and self-close it. Now again, with HTML5 though, you really don't have to do it because it's implied that this is self-closing. Many people do. I tend to do sometimes, it just depends on the state. But this is perfectly okay as well because it's implied that it's self-closing. So be sure to keep that in mind. So with that out of the way, this is what you're gonna use as the structure for every document. If you now wanna greet the reader, we'll type hello world, come back, refresh the page, and sure enough, you have your first nicely structured website. And again, if I go to view source, you'll see exactly what we have right here. Very nice. Now the last thing we'll discuss in this lesson is indentation. Do you notice how these two lines are indented? Why is that? Why didn't we do it like this? And the reason is purely for aesthetics. This will work exactly the same. If I refresh, no change at all. But do you notice one thing here? It's much more difficult to decipher. So it's a common convention that when you have what we call a parent element, this is an element, and there are elements or tags with inside it. So this is what's known as a parent element, and everything inside it are its children elements. So I'm gonna use that a lot, parent child. Just as meta is a child of the head element, the head element is a child of the HTML element. And just know we're referring to things being nested. So it's a common convention that when you have elements within a parent, you indent them. That way it's much easier to read and also easier to see the beginning and closing. And note that we're doing the exact same thing with the body element. Notice how hello world, everything up to this point has been wrapped in a tag. This is the, the title, this is the head. We have body. But then within here, we have hello world. How do we tell the document how this should be displayed? Many ways. We've already learned that if we want this to be wrapped within strong tags or to be bold by default, we could wrap it within strong. If I refresh the page, sure enough, that's bold. And also, if we want something to be, to be displayed as a paragraph, we're adding a paragraph of text, we can wrap it within a P tag, and that's called a paragraph element. And now if I refresh, you're gonna see the same thing more or less, but I'm gonna show you the difference here. Let's type hello world, hello universe. Now, how do you think this is gonna display on the page? Let's try it, refresh, and it's all on one line. But how come? Within our document, we put it on a new line. Well, let's try to fix that. I'm gonna create a lot of spaces now, and this time it'll definitely display below. Nope, it's not doing that either, how come? We have all the spacing. And it's because remember, writing HTML markup is not the same as working in Microsoft Word. We have to explicitly tell the browser how to display it. So now this time, let's say, hello world is going to be a paragraph of text. And then hello universe is going to be a new paragraph of text. Let's try that. And what you'll see here is if I refresh the page, it'll display like this. And again, we come back to that same question. The elements cannot style the text. It can only describe the content. I know that's a high level, but we discussed this in a previous lesson. And again, it comes back to the fact that browsers have default styling for elements. Browsers know that a paragraph of text should be on its own line, and it should also have some spacing below it. So with that out of the way, we've done a lot. You've downloaded your first code editor. You've looked at image editors, which we'll 
review in more detail in future lessons, and you've built your first page. Now, the last thing I want you to think of, though, is every time you create a new page, that's a lot to write, isn't it? There are some programs that will allow you to save what we call templates or templates, but if you don't have one, there are programs available on the web called a snippet managers, code snippet managers, and it's where you can save uh, commonly used snippets of code for reuse. There are lots of tools on the Mac. I'm a big fan of a program called Snippets. So let's try this out. I'm going to get rid of this because that is our body, but this is our structure. I'm going to copy that, create a new snippet, and I'm going to paste this in, and we'll call it HTML5 markup. And now I'm going to specify that it's HTML. And now we have our fresh snippet. So what's nice about this is I'm going to close this out, create a brand new file, and now rather than starting over and typing that every time, no pros do that. Instead, it will either be there for you, pre-populated if you have that specific code editor, or you can paste it in. So you have a couple options on the Mac with snippets. I can come back here and simply manually copy that, paste it in, or there are shortcuts. And on the Mac, that happens to be Command F12. And I can type that keystroke we assigned, which was HTML5, Enter, and now I have my beginning markup. If you are on Windows, there's also some tools available as well. So I highly recommend you research that and find something that feels comfortable to you because you're going to be saving a lot of markup and a lot of code in future lessons for reuse. So make sure you find something.